Ah, welcome. So we made it. Okay, so I, I have to tell the truth. The reason we have this party is to sort of distract from the fact that I am turning 50 in two months. <laughs> My father had a very busy year that year. So first of all, welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. I can't believe all the people that have come from so far away. Um, just amazing. Um, I want to just say that this would not be possible without the hard work and dedication of one individual. And I'd like the room to recognize my father, Harrison Cutler. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of incredible people that have helped make Delmar what it is today. The list is, is incredibly long. I'm going to focus on my father because I was not always the incredible specimen of executive you see standing here confident. You, I, you can laugh. I mean, it, it, this is true. But um, my father never gave up on me, and I have an incredible support system. Uh, we have a, a good friend and family member. We consider family member and partner today and Mr. Michael Wagan sitting over there. I'd like to recognize Michael. This is not a joke, but I think for the first 10 years I worked at Delma, I, I tortured Michael. I, I, it wasn't intentional. He put up with it. He has very thick skin, thank goodness, a lot of patience. He put up with me, taught me, mentored me. Later on, my brother joined and um, he's been instrumental in making Delmar what it is today and, uh, and, and, and really I, I thank him for that. I also mentioned my brother briefly, my brother Paul, my partner, uh, my oldest friend, my dearest friend, my best friend. Paul, where are you? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Listen, don't, don't heckle me from there because I'll make you come on stage. Um, yeah, so I mean, I had a rough start. Like, the first few months I worked at Delma, I worked in Dorval, and we had a small air freight department, and we were sending packages pretty much to and from the U.S. and Canada, and like, who knew there were two Jamaicas, you know? I, I thought I was sending the parcel to Jamaica, New York, but it ended up in Kingston. Yeah, man, me thinks you made a mistake. Somebody called me and told me the box was in the wrong city. My dad stuck with me. It was very, very difficult in the beginning, but uh, we persevered. My father is full of passion, dedication, incredible moral character, and he's my own personal MacGyver, frankly. I mean, I, you've never seen a guy make something out of nothing or create solutions from, I mean, his, his thinking is just, I, I've said this before, it's not lineage. There's no, you can't imagine how he gets from point A to point B and point C. It doesn't make sense. But I'll give you one example. So, well, I'll give you two, actually. I don't remember how many of you were even alive when the first mobile phone uh, appeared. It wasn't really a phone. And I'm not talking about the Motorola brick, because a lot of you might remember the brick. I'm talking before that. I'm talking about this suitcase of a thing that used to go in the trunk of a car and you would pick up the thing and you would get an operator. It kind of like in the old days when you rang the, the box and an operator ran and you'd have to identify yourself. It was called a mobile, a mobile phone and it was huge. And my dad came home with one and I remember the number. Our code was actually Y2K3252. That was our identification code. And my dad came home one day all excited with, the, and he, he wonders why I'm such a technophobe or such a, like a geek, and a technophobe is the opposite of a geek, right? But it comes from him. So he came home with this thing one day, and he says, I love this thing. This thing is going to let me spend time with you guys. This thing is going to let me get away from the office. You have to remember, till I was about 15 years old, didn't see my father. I woke up to go to school, 7 o'clock in the morning, dad was gone, came home, from school, did my homework, had dinner, went to bed, dad wasn't home. So this went on for most of the beginning years of Delmar. And he came home one day with this thing and he said, I'm going to be able to be away from the office and make sales calls and do things I have to do and call in. And, and he used a dictaphone and he used all kinds of like technology at that time 
to allow him to spend more time with us. And I remember very vividly uh, him starting to uh, rent these little houseboats, which we used to take up and down the St. Lawrence Seaway. I'm not talking about super yachts. I I'm talking literally about 26, 25, 24 feet uh, boats. And, uh, you know, Paul and I would go to hockey camp in the summer a little bit. And then for two weeks, my dad would take us on this little boat. My sisters came on occasion, but it was mostly my father, my mother, my, my dog, and my brother. Not in that order. Um, <laughs> and, and we would go out on the boat. And one day, I wake up to my mom. I mean, you were a little hysterical. You were, she wasn't hysterical, hysterical. But, she, I mean, we were sinking. So she wasn't happy. And I, I jump off the top bunk and I land in about what seemed to me like a ton of water, but it was probably six inches. I mean, I was all of like three feet tall. Three feet of water, corrects me. You know, I have the mic. Um, so she's panicking and my dad is trying to figure out what to do in this situation. We were anchored in a little bay and we were taking on water and it had these two little engine compartments. and. My, my mother's busy with a cup, I think, trying to throw the water out of the boat, and she's a little hysterical, and my father can't think. And anyway, long story short, he managed to get one of the two little engines running, and he pulled up the anchor, and he just gunned the boat, and he crashed it into the, the beach, I guess it was. And then he stopped the boat, he looked at my mother, and he said, Ellie, you can relax now, we can't sink. So he solved that problem I mean, he created another problem, but I guess he, he solved the immediate, the immediate problem. He's very adventurous, very ingenious. And um, very intelligent for making me present. Um, in 1972, Canada played Russia in the Summit Series. My mother and father were there. That's how adventurous my parents were. Or my, my father was an incredible salesman, at least, to get my mother there. <laughs> Imagine that, 1972, we're talking about when the Iron Curtain was still up. He went to Moscow. You couldn't wander the streets in Moscow and visit uh, uh, Yves Saint Laurent and, you know, like you do today. It's, it's not like it was today. Uh, not that it's, I don't know what it's like, like today. But um, pretty amazing guy. And um, he has a, uh, a philosophy that uh, it's not really about if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. His philosophy is you can always make it better and you should always try to make it better and you should always strive to make things more efficient. And that's what is at the heart of Del Mar and that's what we try to um, imbue in all of our people. And we have an incredible global team of executives, many of whom, a lot of whom are here today from all over the world, from Brazil and Vietnam and China and Mexico and I mean an incredible group of people. We're all like-minded. We all think and feel the same way about the company, very passionate about the company. And um, besides that, I don't really want to say much more except to say that um, there was a young gentleman who died uh, last year of the age of 17, very sick young man. His name was um, Sam Burns. And, and he said, you know, you should count your blessings every single day and never miss a party if it can be helped. Never miss a party if it can be helped. And my philosophy is never miss the opportunity to make a party. So please enjoy yourselves. The love of my life, I hope, is here. My wife, Deborah, if she's not, I'll introduce her to you later. Good night, everybody, and enjoy yourselves.